It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being with me today. I am excited that you are here today, my friends, because we are going back to music by the Moody Blues. It was June of 2022 when I first reacted to Days of Future Past, their classic second album, and I absolutely was enthralled by it. Love it, I have it on vinyl. And uh, I have since gone on to hear uh, more from the Moody Blues, especially in search of the Lost Chord. And I intend to continue going through their catalog. And uh, here on YouTube, I have previously released my reaction to this Days of Future Past album, uh, but it was just side one. And so today, with side two, we are going to move into the afternoon and the evening and into the night. And we get to hear Forever Afternoon, Time to Get Away, The Sunset, Twilight Time, Nights in White Satin, and then we conclude with Late Lament and Resolvement. And uh, I'm going to include my original wrap-up to this album. Uh, when I do these Extended Play Lounge episodes, uh, I like to uh, try to uh, make sense of what I just heard in real time, and so you will get to hear that at the end of this uh, of this reaction but this was uh, recorded back in june of 2022 and i am pleased to share it with you now days of future past side two from the moody blues on we go though y'all this is side two and now we are in the afternoon uh for this one it looks like there's two little tracks uh hidden in the afternoon forever afternoon and then tuesday question mark and that one is a Hayward tune. And then Evening, Time to Get Away. And that is a Lodge tune. So let's uh, let's see how this one works, y'all. This is uh, the afternoon. Off we go. That sounds like A minor. Not very familiar with it though. Now I'm on my way. It doesn't matter to me chasing the clouds away. Something or that Mellotron has a funny, not funny, the trees but are drawing interesting sound. Me. So lo-fi, it's like a lo-fi orchestra. <laughs> Those gentle voices I hear explain it all with a sigh. Because the strings, that's the mellotron, right? Not the orchestra. So this is, we're getting a little older. We're starting to reflect a little bit on what has been and what we've done. You know, I'm looking at myself, reflections of my mind. It's just the kind of day to leave myself behind. Hmm. This is also a little backwards of this particular song. It starts with the chorus and then it goes to a verse and then back to a chorus. Or is this the verse? <laughs> Those 
Gentle voices I hear explain it all with the sigh. We're seeking meaning now in this afternoon phase of our life. Reasons, accountability, you know, the big questions. And again, goes away and we get these interludes beautiful landing there down by a half step Robo takes the lead you really do get the stereo effects Part two, evening time to get away here. The time of day doesn't last. No shit. The time. <laughs> yeah, now the time is getting away from us, right? sets in. I was expecting. And they get back to where they came from. Two, five, one. E, pretty sure. And e. 
resolves down by major third, and that's going to fade out. Okay, does it continue on into the next tune? I, I am curious. Uh, speaking of that, let's see. I'm going to put that in. And um, the next one here is Evening, the Sunset, and that's a Pender tune. And then Twilight Time is a Ray Thomas tune. We're just going right through these. The songs are relatively short, and I'm th they make so much sense to me, y'all. The concept is so ironclad. I don't have much else to say. I'm just enjoying myself, and I hope that you are as well. This is a lovely lovely sounding album just a great album to kick back to and relax right so on we go with evening all right and here is uh, the sunset off we go <laughs> Third um, resolutions. Maybe that's where all the prog guys get it. If this is one of the first prog albums, they're doing a bunch of these uh, uh, harmonic relationships. but I think those sound I think those are some real strings from the orchestra with them I could be wrong when the sun goes down and the clouds all frown night has begun for the sunset shadows on the ground never make a sound it's like it's casting a spell Musically. Night has now become day for everyone. I can see it all from this great height. I can feel the sun slipping out of sight. And the world still goes. sitting in this I don't know it's just this feeling of what they say it is the sun setting right twilight or I guess twilight is next Sun's rays every day, take a look out there, planets everywhere.
starting to sort of go into a dream world or sort of uh, Oh, I think it's good foggy. Good. Peter really does know how to bring the um, the color out of the orchestra. I'm really impressed with his contribution here, and that shouldn't be overlooked. I mean, he's not a member of the band, but man, I, they, they couldn't have done this without him, right? Really, really great stuff. Okay, y'all, we're on to the last little bit. This is going to be Knights in White Satin, the big one from this album, right? Even I know this one. And then Late Lament uh, slash Resolvement is going to be uh, after that as we close out the album. Uh, Knights in White Satin was written by uh, Justin Hayward. And then The Late Lament is another uh, collaboration between Knight and and uh, Graham Edge. So off we go, y'all, Knights in White Satin. Here we go. I think that's the Mellotron first. in white satin never reaching the end letters I've written never meaning to send beauty I'd always missed yeah that's the melody playing the, 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 the counter melody down to C just what the truth then to G, and then instead of the five chord, we get flat two down to E minor. Then a major four, right? So you get a Phrygian sound, and then a Lydian sound, and then back to regular minor with a flat six. So Justin's given us just about everything. Beginning to learn the Mellotron sound, it has this sort of wispy attack to it. To it's different from the regular instruments, and it has a little defend. fidelity loss, you know, from Just note to note, to especially this early in the 60s. I think 
this really does cement as a lament itself. He was going through a tough breakup as he wrote it. He was only 19, I think, at the time. Um, so he was looking on a past relationship and a future relationship because he had met the woman who was going to be his wife at this time as he had written it. So a mix of despair and excitement and the metaphor of the sheets uh, being changed, right? As well as this metaphor of being, you know, the nighttime of our lives, right? And how um, I don't know. For me, it's like recognizing all of that I had not done right, or recognizing all that I want to try again, and wanting to go back and have another shot at it. You know. Never reaching the end. Letters I've written Never meaning to send Beauty I've always missed Things that were second-guessing Beauty that I've missed Just what the truth is I'm so screwed up I don't even know what the truth is anymore Can I have another shot? Because in the end, the love is the only thing that remains pure that we understand and know for sure. You know? This big major chord with the C sharp into a C natural, a C major chord. special part where we get orchestra and band together. Lights fade from every room. Bedsitter people look back and lament. Another day's useless energy spent. Mm. Impassioned lovers wrestle as one. Lonely man cries for love and has none. New mother picks up and settles her son. Senior citizens wish they were young. Everyday lives. Cold-hearted orb that rules the night. Back to the beginning. Removes the colors from our sight. Red is gray and yellow white. But we decide which is right and which is an illusion. That F9 chord. Spicy.
I think I know what the thing at the very beginning was. It was the gong backwards. Yes? Yes? At the end of one life, and the gong sounds. Right? And, and, it, and the sound decays. Right? Right? Well, if you loop it, right at the gong, and we're back at dawn again. Um, is that, uh, what do you think? That's just, that's what popped into my head as I did that, because the, the first part of the, um, of the spoken word of the poem at the end, the first stanza, I'm going back in my notes here. Cold heart, it starts with cold hearted orb that rules the night, removes the colors from our sight, red is gray and yellow white, but we decide which is right and which is an illusion. And then it goes on to other stuff, right? So at the very end, two little stanzas, and then we end cold hearted orb that rules the night, and it's the same thing, it's the same five lines, and then gong and fade out. It's a powerful metaphor, y'all. And I think it works just as well as a tone poem in the classic sense of the word. Um, a, a programmatic classical piece. Uh, as it does um, a programmatic progressive rock recording. It works in my mind equally well, uh, which is kind of the little miracle of this little album, isn't it? There's some of these songs that uh, I'm like, you yeah, know, it, it, on their own, I'm not sure if they would have kind of this big um, um, sort of lasting uh, connection for me but in the context of the uh, of the of the narrative it 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 definitely connects all everything connects together uh boy that was fun that was really really fun and so lovely um yeah you know so w what an album y'all uh 1967 moody blues uh doing their thing uh this out this so this uh recording right is quite important uh it helps sort of launch the the modern progressive rock milieu right we've got the stereo t recording technology we've got uh uh in nights in white satin proof that a that a hit single can be longer than three minutes you know uh also proof that you don't need you know six hit singles and six b-sides to make a record you know you can make it all the way through and uh and have it at least in a rock and roll sense have it mean something uh have it really really mean something and mean something deep and not just frivolous entertainment right it's it's taking a true um songwriting emotional journey uh classic technique approach to the way that the music is is constructed, is put together, is performed, and recorded, and uh, it sets them on a path that is continuing to this day. You know, it makes uh, the band uh, one of the the stalwarts, and that uh, because the, because it's that good, it really is quite wonderful. Y'all, uh, you never steer me wrong. I, I love all of these recommendations that we get. I wish I could get to more of them quicker. But every time I do one, I feel, at the, by the time I get to the end here, I feel such a sense of, of uh, just pride. And um, I'm trying to think of the word. Just, I feel lucky to be able to uh, document listening to these things like all the way through like this for the first time. Um, and be in a position where I can share that with all of you. It really does mean something 
uh, to me, and I'm uh, I'm pleased to have y'all along for the ride. So thanks for everything, and thanks for supporting the channel. I really do appreciate it. We got a lot more coming up in the future months, and I'm not sure what's going to be next. Uh, there'll probably be a poll, <laughs> and we'll see where we go from there. Thanks, y'all. This has been the ex <laughs> let's try that again. This has been the extended play lounge, episode 22, Days of Future Past by the Moody Blues. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.